Welcome, this is Melinda Barlow, CCT, Certified Zentangle Teacher, and it's December 26th. It's cloudy, and I believe the temperature is about 17. We never know what we're going to get here, but today I am working on a little pocket um, journal, and I'm going to put a, on the cover, I'm going to put one of my Zentangle tiles. This is one I just did it's one of the new ones can't remember the name <laughs> isn't that typical and um i i i used a old composition notebook for the pages here's another one that i did and it's also done all in in just pink and um just to give it some different look i haven't decided on what i'm going to put on the cover i could easily put this tangle on the cover I um, this is a new one I just did it's called Edelweiss and it could easily <coughs> excuse me go on the cover I just haven't decided so here I have my pages cut and this is from a recycled um, like I said composition folder you know how you get those composition folders and you use like about half the book and then what do you do with the other half? Well, I've decided that I'm going to just make a little pocket journal so that I can write different things in. I always need something to write in when I'm, um, you know, like take a note for something. And if you have a little journal you can put in that was relatively inexpensive but fun to make. <laughs> so here I have my papers cut and to be honest I don't know what size they are so let me get my ruler out here so I can tell you I've cut it four and a half by seven and so it will end up to be four and a half by three and a half which is the size of a um, Zentangle tile or I've got some it's it's too large for a five I mean too small for a five tile but the cover might not be now the cover will to be but anyway this is the size that it ended up so now I'm going to fold my uh, papers and I'm going to put 10 in each signature so I like to fold my signatures, my papers, one at a time, not in a pack of ten, and then slide them together. I just make a, a small crease, you know, not with my bone folder, just folding it over and making a crease. So I'm going to have um, four signatures in here, so I will have... 40 um, pages and which will end up to be a lot more when I'm done you know because you get front and back front and back so here I have my signatures 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 I have my 10 signatures I mean my 10 papers and now I'm going to slide them in to each other so that I make a little sandwich of my papers. And I like to fold them once and then when I get ready to make my signature, I, uh, I will press them again. So I'm just putting these in. Well, can't open them this morning. In here so that they are sandwiched in. So there I have them all sandwiched in. And did I get it right? No, I've got one that's not right. That can happen. So I have them set, um, sandwiched in here. Now I will take my bone folder and I will crease it really good after I've got them all in there. 
and they're not going to be exactly even on the edges and I don't mind that but I can also cut them off with my um, my cutting machine I have a book cutting machine so um, it's kind of nice so now I have one signature so I'm just going to show you how I prepare it then I'm going to prepare the rest of these and then we'll come back because you don't need to see me fold a jillion of these oh, I forgot to get out my here's my all so I'm going to use a an all a book punch all I got it in a kit on Amazon which is was really nice you can use any all that you have you can even use um, a large darning needle I, I it will be a little harder to use uh, a large darning needle but you can use a large darning needle to punch your holes if you need to but I find it much easier to do it here now to mark where I want my holes I am going to take um, one of my papers that um, I've cut the right size and I'm going to fold it in half and then I'm going to tear it so it's just one sheet and then I'm going to fold it in half again lengthwise and then I'm going to fold it in half again well I should say widthwise then lengthwise and then I'm going to fold it so it's not quite to the end you can see one of the the um, paper lines I don't want it to be all the way to the end I am going to have three holes that I punch so I'm going to mark them so you can see where my folds are here's a fold here's a fold and here's a fold so if I were to fold it again I would fold here and then I would fold on that line and it would I would have a little space at the top so but now I'm going to open it up and I'm going to mark right where those three lines are on that center line so this is my little template for making the placing the holes so now I have my paper unfolded and I am putting my template in there and I'm on my cutting mat so I can push down and go straight through my cutting mat and I like to make sure I go straight down and then through and there I have my set of holes in my first signature and then I will do that with all of these so give me a second and I will come back with them all folded okay I've gotten my four signatures um, folded and put with my marking so I've just kind of I don't know if you can see yeah there you can see the holes if I don't crunch them together and now I'm getting ready to um, sew them together so when I sew them together I use a um, a darning needle which means it doesn't have a it has a flat or a rounded tip and a big hole and I use um, crochet cotton so I'm going to pull off I keep my crochet cotton in my bottom drawer so I'm gonna pull off I'm gonna measure so I know how many one two three four five six so one and a one stretch for each um, signature and then um, two more so that I have um, enough thread and then I take my beeswax 
and this is just from when I had bees, and I wax my thread. It just helps strengthen it and go through the um, pages a little easier. I don't know. I've always waxed my thread. When I would sew buttons on, it got waxed. When I, I don't know, just, so now I'm going to thread my needle. And I am only going to do this single thread. So here we start. I have my needle and I'm going to go down through the top of my signature. And then I'm going to pull. And I have a habit of pulling that too far. So I'm going to hold it with my thumb. Sometimes on a larger book, I will hold it with a uh, bulldog clip. Then I'm going to go up. And I want to make sure that I've pulled that tight and then back down through this hole. And then I'm going to come back up again through the middle. And this is where I'm going to tie it off. I'm going to tie, I'm going to do a surgeon's knot, which means I wrap three times and then pull it and it will kind of stay tight. And then I wrap three more time one two three so I wrap around it instead of just once I do three times and pull it tight and there's my knot now I'm going to trim off this little bit of thread that's hanging there because it will bug me as I sew couldn't find my end of my needle. So now I'm ready to attach the second signature and it's done different than the first one. The first one kind of hooks them all together. Now I'm going to lay my second signature up here and I'm going to go down through the first hole and pull it up. Now I'm going to come up through this second hole and this is where it gets a little tricky. I'm going to go under that thread that's right there and then back around so I'm going around that thread and then back down through that hole and it makes a little stitch kind of like a a little loop kind of and then I'm going to come up through the last hole and I'm going to go around this but instead of going back down through that hole I'm going to pick up my third signature and I'm going to go down through this hole on that third signature so I go back and forth up through the middle signature and then I'm going to go around that loop that I just made. Let me see if I can um, come in a little bit so you can see. See how I have gone in through between those two pages with my needle and thread and then I'm pulling that and then I'm going to come and go back down through that hole. And you can see that there's kind of a little chain stitch. Then I come back up through this hole and I go under that uh, knot that I have there and I'm ready to add my fourth signature on. And again, I go down through on my paper and there's just kind of a half of a little chain stitch there. Then I come back up through that middle one and I'm going to go under that 
little chain stitch right there and back down through that middle hole and I'm going to come over to my last one and I'm going to go underneath and I like to go back down through the hole and then on this other side where it is there is a loop and I go under that loop because it will kind of secure it and then poke it back up through and now I can tie a sort of knot I'm just going to go through my thread I did that really fast let me do it again I'm going to go under and then when my it hooked on there I'm going to go through this loop and it's going to tie a knot matter of fact it tied one a little bit so I've got a loop there but that's going to be okay I can't pull it down now that's going to be okay because I'm going to glue that and then I cut my um, um, string off and there I have my book sewn together and if you look at it it feels a little in between the signatures feel a little wobbly um, but we're going to take some glue first of all I'm going to pull out a bulldog clamp well I don't know if these are really bulldog clamps and I'm going to clamp it on the ends that's a little big one right here so that the pages are fairly close together then I am going to take I'm going to have to stand up and reach over my computer and um, now I'm going to take my fabric tack this is my favorite glue and I am going to just put pick off the little pieces there put a little pe a little dab of glue on each of those lines and now I'm just going to let it sit so that it glues together <coughs> while I cut my end pieces <coughs> okay I've got my two pieces of paper they're not the right size um, but I'm going to measure this piece of paper and I'm going to cut this the right size since this one was already folded I just so I'll fold this extra little piece of paper and I'm just going to I don't want to use those scissors I would give somebody a early grave if they used my fabric scissors on paper so now I'm just going to trim this is a little heavier it's a lightweight cardstock I should say it's not very heavy it's probably 65 pounds and now I need to cut another one for the both ends so I'm just going to fold it and hand cut it you can barely see on camera where I need to cut so there I have my end pieces <clears throat> that I'm ready to put on so I'm going to come back to my signature and this glue dries fairly fast it's not quite glue dry but it dries really fast but I can take those clips off and I'm ready to add my end papers the end paper is this piece right here in the book that holds the whole signature in the book so you can see this one was a um, a tie dyed not a tie dyed <laughs> a hand dyed piece of um, 
I, I think I dyed that with um, avocado pit. Let's see what I put in this one. And this one's just another piece of coffee dyed. Actually, it's not dyed with coffee. I dye with uh, black walnut stain, homemade black walnut stain. So here's my signatures, my end pieces. And I'm going to take my uh, fabric tack glue and I am going to put a bead of glue right on that folded edge all the way down a very narrow piece of glue down there and then I'm going to lay it on my signatures right on the edge I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to do the same thing on this other side. So I'm just going to take my glue and glue that edge and put it on there. So it's just barely glued. I need to take my bulldog clips back again. This time I'm putting them over the top so that it's squeezing right where I put that glue. So right on the edge, you can kind of see that I put it right, 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 right on the edge of my paper. And now I need to let that sit for a while so that it dries completely. I will probably let it sit for Oh, a couple of hours. So in the meantime, I have one that is ready. I think this one has one, two, three, four. This one has five signatures in it. And I haven't done, it's just plain. And I'm ready to make the cover for this, um, this little book. And I did a video already with just the cover. I don't know if it's posted or not. So I will refer you to the video, the next video that is making the cover so uh, for the little book. And I've also done it smaller. This is a five tile one, same principle. I just took five tiles, but this time I only did two, um, two holes. If you can see that I have, well, I have three holes in here. Um, the same way that I did before and this one won't stay shut so I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to make a closure on it and I will make a closure but I can bulldog it shut and see if I can't help it to stay shut so stay tuned oh, stay tuned for the next video I hope I put them both up one today and one Thursday so thanks again for watching and don't forget to subscribe and this is a good way to share your tiles with a friend because you can make them a little tiny book and they make up so quickly and they're so much fun. And then you can share your, your tiles with them. And if you're like me, I have a lot of tiles because I teach all the time. And, and I like to teach on the tiles because it's satisfying. But I had to find ways that I could give them away. And so now I put them in, cat, in, in my little books. I could even put one on the inside here if I wanted to. But I like it on the outside. So thanks again for watching. And don't forget to tangle every day. And enjoy. Welcome to Melinda Barlow's.